Hi there, this is Jonathan Natuck with ProSep Associates. In this video we're going to talk about backlog management. This is one of the new techniques in the latest version of the Babock and it is Babock section 10.2. So backlog management is a means of handling our requirements for an agile methodology. So let's take a look first at a traditional methodology for our requirements. So in a traditional uh, software development lifecycle, our requirements usually go in a large document, right? A business requirements document, a software requirements specification. We also provide it in an all at once delivery, right? Like here is my big document, here you go, it's all done. And we're usually looking for a sign off at that point. So these are some of the characteristics that you might be familiar with as a business analyst. In, if you're working in a traditional uh, software development lifecycle or traditional project management approach. In contrast with this, the product backlog is a completely different approach to uh, handling our requirements or documenting our requirements. So our requirements are actually going to be documented on cards or stickies or electronic versions thereof, right? So I'm going to use the, the term backlog item for, for the rest of this video, but it could be that physical card, a sticky, or an electronic representation. That is what a backlog item is going to be. So when we talk to business analysts about, you know, hey, you're not going to create this big document, you're going to create these backlog items, you know, the common questions that come up, first of all, is, you know, what's the level of detail, right? How, what's the correct level of detail that goes on these backlog items? Uh, how do we estimate these backlog items? How do we prioritize them? Uh, and how do we handle changes to these backlog items? So these are the common questions that we usually see related to backlog management for business analysts. And these are the things we're going to talk about in this video. So first we'll talk about details and timing. So the level of detail is kind of very specific, which is it's enough to estimate and prioritize, but not enough to build. I'll let you think about that for a second here. So we want to record uh, enough detail that we can prioritize. No, that's not so bad, right? Uh, Usually, if we're doing a software development, uh, for example, you know these backlog items are going to represent you know some features or some functionality. It might be easy for us to to prioritize them. Um, we can also use agile approaches and backlogs, and definitely in a lot of different other scenarios other than uh, software development. So we want to make sure that our card allows us to prioritize those items and also to estimate them. We have a kind of specific way of estimating in Agile which is relative sizing, so we can talk about that maybe in another video. But uh, we want enough on our card to be able to estimate and prioritize, but not enough to build. So in other words, if we were to take that backlog item and, and hand it over to our implementation team, you know, we do not expect that they could take that and go to work. There isn't enough detail in that backlog item for that solution team to go ahead with that. So that's a major difference again from our large document. The whole point of our traditional all at once document is, hey, I produced the document, here you go, go build it. Uh, don't come back and ask me questions. All the answers are in the document. The document is meant to be all of the communication that's related to those requirements. So the backlog is, is very different in that it it is detailed because there's going to be a very, very large number of these backlog items. Uh, you know, it's pretty easy, quick to get to you know 100 backlog items. Uh, however, they don't contain enough detail to build, only enough to estimate and prioritize. So, at a, some point later on, we're going to take that backlog item and have a conversation. That is what's going to produce an implementable requirement. So the backlog item is more just for, for tracking of priority and estimate. Uh, we're going to have a collaborative conversation with some stakeholders when it's actually time to go ahead and implement that requirement. The next thing we'll talk about here is backlog management. That's actually the, the, the technique here in the Babock that we're talking about. So you'll hear backlog management, you'll also hear backlog maintenance, backlog grooming. These are kind of all the same thing. So what's involved with backlog management, number one, is changing priorities, right? Uh, that's the whole point of Agile, is that our priorities can change 
And as those priorities change, it's very simple, right? We're just reorganizing our backlog items. We're assigning new priorities to our backlog items. The beauty of this is, because we haven't invested so much time and energy to create an implementable requirement, that we have a less detailed level of, of requirement, uh, we don't have so much attachment to them, and we're therefore more free to reprioritize them and, and kind of move them around. So that is one of the key agile features that we achieve, or agile benefits that we achieve uh, by using the backlog. We could have some changing backlog items. So we can have you know, new items appearing, we can have items uh, disappearing. Again, being agile, you know, that doesn't bother us too much because our investment in the backlog is very minimal. We might have estimates changing. Is that possible? You know, yes, it is possible. So if one of those backlog items, uh, we need to change the estimate, there's kind of a, a few scenarios where that can occur and a few scenarios where it, can, where it cannot. The first thing to say is, uh, because our estimates are based on relative sizing, a change in resource does not necessitate a change in estimate. So that's a, a very tricky thing to get your head around. But uh, these estimates are relative to one another. They're not tied to the resources. So if resources change, estimates don't have to change. There are some scenarios where an estimate can change. We might have uh, learning, right? So we might have a better understanding of that backlog item that allows us to see, oh, you know what, the estimate is really wrong, right? We, we did a similar one and uh, we thought it was a you know, large amount of work and it turns out to be a medium one, but we can go back and change this one. So that's something that, that can occur. Uh, and also, you know, the, the definition of that backlog item could change as well. There could be changes in the overall environment, the constraints, the assumptions, and so on, uh, that changes the meaning of that, that backlog item in a significant way uh, that would cause us to revisit the estimate. Final step of maintaining our backlog is uh, we call usually backlog review uh, or story review. Uh, and in, in BABOK terms, that's verification, right? So ensuring that the, the quality of those backlog items is, is there uh, in terms of, you know, they're consistent, they're complete, they're verifiable, testable, all of those kind of things. Uh, so that can cause us to uh, make some changes to the items in our backlog. Thanks very much. This has been Jonathan Intuck with ProSep Associates. If you have any questions about backlog items or any other content that uh, we provide in some of our training courses, you can visit our website. Thank you.